Okay, and we are live. ¿Qué tal, amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks. Yet another live stream coming to you from Madrid, the capital of Spain, 7.35 p.m. And we'll go through some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the press today. We'll go into the comment section, check out what has been happening there also. Plenty of chat, plenty of activity in that chat section. Uh, sorry, the comment section. And then in the second half of today's live stream, we'll go into the chat section, the live chat section, and check out, check out what is happening there, the chat section here to my right. Now, the first thing I'll do is put the like icon on the screen. If you haven't hit it yet, please consider doing so. Just below the video, you will find it, whether you are on Facebook or YouTube, where the majority of you are watching today. Uh, hit the like button if you can. Now, the first piece of news that we'll look at today relates to the main topic of conversation, the drought and Europe's market garden, Spain, are fruit and vegetable exports at risk from drought? The question is being asked. Spain grows one in four of the fruit and vegetables produced in the EU. Every year, the Spanish countryside exports part of its production to the EU27 and slightly alleviates a trade balance that is otherwise always in deficit. The drought is threatening the muscle and exports of the so-called market garden of Europe. For the moment, the sector is cautious, although by no means catastrophic. It is not the same for everyone. Fruit and vegetables are not in a homogeneous situation, explains Andres Gongora, Provincial Secretary of the Coordination of Farmers' Organisations in Almeria, where the greatest extension of these crops is concentrated. There, the harvest is a cause for concern in the open-air plots of produce such as lettuce, watermelon, and broccoli. So uh, the sector is cautious, but by no means catastrophic just yet because of the drought. Almeria down there in the south of Spain, historically a very dry part of the country, uh, very popular, is greenhouse growing down there. But as we saw, there are some outdoor plots or outdoor growing, lettuces, watermelons, things like that. Uh, Murcia also producing a lot of the produce for the European Union. Uh, especially when it comes to uh, fruit and veg, of course. And then you've got other parts of Andalusia where there, there is also a lot of production going on. So the drought uh, most prominent in those parts of Spain currently. Uh, now, the next piece of news we'll look at here. Now, Ms. Ayuso, the Madrid Premier, she's come, up, she's come up with an idea to put a plant on every balcony in Madrid. And according to El Diario uh, .es, it's a frivolous and unscientific measure to tackle the climate, climate crisis. Barely half a year ago, Isabel Diaz Ayuso stated in the Madrid Assembly that climate change is cycles and that, therefore, we cannot go against scientific evidence. While experts warn of an accelerated rise in temperatures and levels of pollution that are harmful to health, the president of Madrid warned that the region does not depend on whether there are heat waves. This Tuesday, in the only election debate in the run-up to the 28th of May, the Madrid leader proposed the measure to bring nature and health to all residents, to families. We are going to do it this way, make every balcony and rooftop in Madrid have a plant, she said. Putting flower pots on balconies or windows is an aesthetic measure that in practice, practice has no effect on the fight against climate change, nor does it have any effect on adapting to the effects of global warming. Now, I saw Ms. Ayuso in this debate. There were some very strange ideas put forward in this debate. I'll tell you about another one in just a minute. But Ms. Ayuso's uh, solution to uh, making Madrid a more climate-friendly uh, city is that uh, everybody put a plant on their balcony or rooftop if you have one of those apartments. Now, some people think she's crazy, but uh, she was dead serious when she was reading this off her notes during that election debate. And as we saw there, perhaps everybody having a plant on their balcony or terrace is not going to fix the problem that Madrid has when it comes to uh, climate issues and uh, other aspects like pollution. Uh, another thing that was put forward by the Podemos uh, candidate was that um, uh, a publicly run delivery company uh, – should be set up, uh, run by the uh, local government, of course, to compete with Uber Eats and uh, Deliveroo and 
uh, Just Eat and uh, that type of um, company. And uh, again, a lot of people questioning whether that would be a good idea to uh, allow a, or to have a state-run de- a state-run delivery company operating not only in Madrid but I'm sure in other parts of the country as well to uh, take on those delivery giants in the market, a state-run uh, home delivery company. Good idea or not, let me know what you think. Another piece of news here, the Partido Popular thinks that it will snatch six regional governments from the PSOE with or without Vox. The PP believes it is going to win at the municipal elections, but it is not throwing caution to the wind. There is tension in the territories because its polls point to a tight battle in practically all the cities in the race. Alberto Núñez Feijó's party is defending 10 provincial capitals and wants to add at least another five or six more, such as Albacete, Granada, Seville, Valladolid, and above all Valencia, which Genoa, or Genoa, where the uh, headquarters of the PP is, sees as within reach, but without great prospects in medium-sized cities. It can win without governing in many of them. So there we go, PP confident or thinking that it can snatch six regional governments, give it 15 or 16 around the country, which would be quite a lot. Um, Not sure on the exact amount of provincial capitals here in Spain, but there are quite a few. So if they can get uh, 15 or 16, I'm sure Mr. Feijo will be happy with that. But uh, the race is on, or the election race or battle is on soon, the 28th, as we know. Now, the final piece of news related to one of uh, my favorite uh, foods here in Spain. Every now and again, I like to sit down and tuck into a nice dish of pulpo. But apparently there's no fresh Galician octopus. Galicia bans its extraction for the next six weeks. For the next six weeks, Galicia refrains from extracting from the sea one of the most iconic products of its gastronomy, octopus. The, the closed season begins which is necessary to favour the reproduction of the species. The capture of octopus will be prohibited in Galicia from 4pm on the 19th of May until 5am on the 3rd of July. The last day that fresh octopus will be auctioned will be this Saturday with catches from the previous day and only in those auctions were sales of this uh, what's that word there, sepalopod, are traditionally recorded on this day of the week. So there we go, no fresh Galician octopus for the next six weeks. And if you've ever seen octopus, this is one of the ways that it is traditionally served, not only in Galicia, but also in other parts of the country. Uh, Pulpo a la gallega, I think they call this, with some uh, boiled potatoes, octopus, uh, sliced octopus or cut octopus on top of it with uh, paprika and a good quality olive oil. And uh, mm -mm. that is, uh, as I said, something that I do enjoy every now and again. And if uh, you do too, let me know in the comments or chat section. Now we'll go into the uh, comment section, check out what is happening there. First comment that was left from uh, Debbie, I think Debbie wrote a comment about a similar topic the other day. Hey, Joe, I'm a bit confused about how Sanchez can promise a two euro cinema fee. Are cinemas in, in Spain government owned or does the government reimburse the cinema? Yeah, good question, uh, Debbie. I can almost uh, say with 100%, um, uh, I can almost 100% sure that uh, cinemas in Spain are not run by the state. They're private companies, the typical uh Uh, companies that um, run cinemas around Europe, I believe. Uh, The proposal that Mr. Mr. Sanchez put forward recently was uh, two euros for pensioners to attend the cinema on Tuesdays. Pensioners pensioners already get a discount uh, to go to the cinema with their pensioners card, but uh, Mr. Sanchez saying that two euros would be the price they pay on Tuesdays. Now, um, what are they going to do? No idea. I don't think they're going to open uh, state-run cinemas. That uh, might be an idea further down the track. I'm sure Podemos will roll that one out soon. But for the time being, I imagine they're going to do what they did with the um, with the petrol rebates, and that's give the money back to the companies according to the amount of people that take up uh, on the offer. So if uh, 10 people go to the cinema on Tuesday with that uh, uh, €2 Euro price uh, being paid, 
then the government will uh, pay the cinema the rest should they put in a claim for it, which I imagine would be the plan. But I don't think they've really thought this one uh, through very well. I don't think we've got any exact details. It was just an election announcement that was made the other day, like many other announcements that have been made recently, but uh, no uh, fine print yet exactly, Debbie, on what is going to happen or how it will happen. So we'll wait and see. Another comment here from uh, Mary. It should be every person's responsibility to pick up trash. Yeah, Mary, pick up your trash? Absolutely, but pick up everyone else's trash. If people leave trash all over the ground, is it my responsibility to pick that trash up too? Or should we be educating people to put their rubbish in bins? which would always be a good idea if we could get it through people's thick skulls that they need to put their rubbish in bins when they're finished with it, rather than throwing cans out the window, for example, or cigarettes out the window, or when they do the famous bot the yon and they leave plastic bags and bottles of Coke, empty bottles of Coke, empty bottles of ice and smashed glass all around the place. Maybe we should be teaching them to pick up their rubbish rather than me having to go there the next day and pick it up for them. That would be my uh, opinion on the topic. And again, we pay council rates for people to go around and pick up rubbish. Whether they do a good job, job or not can be debated, but uh, we do pay council rates for people to clean up. Uh, and I do see people uh, with that uh, job every day riding around the streets on their bikes uh, picking up rubbish. Do they pick up everything, as I said? Maybe not but uh, it is their job to do so. That is why we pay council rates. But thanks, Mary, for the idea. One from Juvenile's Dad. I'm sceptical that uh, South American drug cartels are smuggling coca leaves into Galicia for processing into cocaine. The volume of leaves required would be a smuggling nightmare compared to the finished product. Could this be some kind of synthetic production from a more readily available uh, chemicals? Asking for a friend is Juvenile's Dad. Yeah, to be honest, I don't know. We saw this the other day that in Galicia, a big uh, drug plant was uh, busted making cocaine here rather than importing it into the country from uh, South American countries of origin. Didn't really read into the uh, article that much, but uh, I'm not sure how they're producing it, whether it's uh, synthetic, where they're getting the product from. Absolutely no idea. But uh, I don't think they would be bringing uh, tons of coca leaves into the country because that would also be illegal, I believe. But if anybody uh, uh, knows better, please let us know in the comment or chat section as to how they are producing this coca or cocaina in uh, Galicia. Please let me know for uh, Juvenile's dad. Uh, friend. Another comment here from Paul. California just exited a 17-year drought, which was particularly severe in recent years. The rains will come, Stuart, or in our case, a 50-foot snowpack in the mountains. Yeah, well, the good news here in Spain is that rain is forecast for the next uh, couple of weeks, I think, in the areas that need it most. Uh, that is Andalusia and Catalonia. Rain is forecast. How much is going to fall? Nobody knows, of course. You, don't, you can't predict how much rain is going to fall, but apparently not enough to ease the drought. It will be enough to, um, to uh, fill the dams a little bit, but uh, it won't be enough to uh, remove drought restrictions, I don't think. But uh, yeah, um, California exited a 17-year drought, which was particularly severe. So uh, we haven't got to that um, um, level of drought yet, but uh, you never know uh, in uh, future years how bad the situation will become. Another comment here from uh, Brian. Hi, Stuart. Brian from uh, La Marina. Uh, I noticed your drive yesterday. They were selling petrol at €1.52 a litre at one of your local stations. I wonder why such a difference in price nationally and local. It can't be sale and demand as everyone needs petrol. A garage down the road near Torre Vieja is selling petrol for 143 a litre. Quite a difference. Yeah, Brian, thanks for the comment. It is true that different autonomous communities here in Spain have different petrol prices. And you've also got the aspect of uh, low cost petrol prices and uh, normal uh, service station prices, for example, at some of the big uh, brand petrol stations like uh, Repsol, Galp, uh, Shell. They normally don't have a discounted fuel, but there are, at least here in Madrid, I'm not sure in other autonomous communities, the rules and regulations, but here in Madrid, um, there are a lot of uh, low-cost 
petrol stations and more uh, are popping up all the time. In fact, in the last 10 years, in the industrial area where I live here that I drove through yesterday, there's probably seven or eight petrol stations there now, whereas five years ago there would have been one or two. So they're popping up like mushrooms because obviously it's a good business and people are getting in on it. And that's one of the reasons why there is a sometimes a 10, 15, 20 cent difference between the brand stations and the low cost. And again, when you do travel, as I said, to some autonomous communities, I've noticed that in Extremadura, petrol is a lot cheaper or fuels a lot cheaper than it is here in Madrid. So I always fill up on my way to Portugal in Extremadura and in a Thepsa or a Sepsa uh, service station, which is a, a brand super, uh, super, um, uh, super petrol station, I should say. I was going to say su- supermarket, but it's a service station. So uh, there, is, uh, there is price variation around the country according to the autonomous community and also according to the type of petrol station that you go to. But a good idea to get a, a, one of these fuel apps on your phone that will tell you in your local area where the cheapest places to fill up are. And uh, I imagine that most uh, people that drive here in Spain would have one or two of those apps on their phones already. But thanks, Brian, for the comment. And the final one here from uh, David. The mind boggles. Did you never consider that the car wash may be closed due to the drought? Uh, Yeah, thanks for the uh, comment, uh, David. A few people said uh, maybe the car wash was closed because of the drought. Here in Madrid, we uh, don't have uh, drought restrictions. There are drought restrictions in some other parts of the country, but Spain is divided into 17 autonomous communities. And uh, it would be like if in uh, Florida there was a um, if in Florida there was uh, drought conditions, but in uh, Georgia, for example, a neighbouring state, there wasn't. It's the same. So there might be drought restrictions or restrictions because of the drought in Catalonia, but it's got nothing to do with Madrid. There might be drought restrictions in uh, Andalusia in some parts, but it's got nothing to do with other parts of the country. And here in Madrid, there are no restrictions. The reason I believe the uh, the uh, car wash was closed is because they have taken it away to either put in a new one or to uh, fix it because it might be broken. But I just went to another place and uh, washed my car uh, like I normally do. So no restrictions. But thanks, David, for your um for your question and uh, obviously uh, um, thinking that everyone in Spain is under the uh, same rules and regulations when it comes to drought, but it's not the case, okay? Thanks for that. And uh, the final one here from uh, Wickler Walker. Spanish town festivals are the best. I love the feeling of community, though perhaps I have been blind to the political elements. What other expats, uh, what have other expats, expats experienced? Yeah. Thanks for the question, or thanks for the uh, comment there, Wickler. I um, don't particularly like my local town festivals. I do like smaller town festivals where there's more of a community feel. But here with 100,000 population and uh, the place is just so crowded, the music's just too loud, and uh, there's just, as I said, there's just too many people, um, uh, you know, drinking and eating for me to enjoy myself there, considering that you have to stand up, there's nowhere to sit down. But when I go to smaller town festivals, like, for example, the one uh, in uh, Portugal that I go to where it's a smaller town, I do enjoy that one because you can walk around, take a seat, have something to eat. It's not too crowded. But here, it's just um, thousands and thousands of people crammed into a very small space uh, and uh, very uncomfortable, in my opinion. But um, if you do like your local town uh, parties, fantastic, but I imagine that it's a, it's a smaller town. That's one of the reasons why most people would like them. But here, just too big, in my opinion. Now, uh, up to the 19-minute mark, I'm going to uh, change the backdrop. Let me uh, do this uh, quickly here. This uh, photo was sent in from... Uh, Aline, and it is uh, Mallorca. It's a different one today. It's a picture of uh, a train, apparently, a classic train that uh, goes from one city there in Mallorca to another. Can't remember, can't remember the exact places that uh, Aline mentioned, but uh, a nice uh, picture, a different type of picture that we normally see. So thanks for sending this one in. And if you've got something similar, the address is uh, this one here, spainspeaks at gmail.com. So feel free to send them through if you can. 
Now, uh, I'll put the little like icon on the screen again. So if you can hit the like button, please, if you haven't done so, just below the video. We'll see if we can get up to a decent tally. But uh, given the amount of people watching today, I don't think so. But if we can get over 100, it should be great. Now, I'll go into the uh, chat section now. Check out what is happening there. Let's have a look here quickly. Um, let me work my way up to the top. Barbara, the first one in today. Hola todos from Playa Flamenca. Tomorrow is supposed to be the start of some unsettled weather and much needed rain. There we go. That's why I, th I think I mentioned that before, that the uh, for the next uh, couple of weeks, there will be some rain in some parts of the country that need it the most. Barbara, thanks for that. Uh, Erica, what, uh, what I remember from the first time I went to Kudiedo 50 years ago, people dried on their facades a small shark from the Atlantic as if they were cod. Uh, they ate that as a stew with potatoes. Delicious. Yeah, some of those uh, local some of those local dishes in those villages, Erica, very, very tasty. Don't know whether they still do that or whether the rules and regulations have got in the way. Most likely that is the case. But, uh, yeah, I've uh, tried some of those local dishes, and uh, they are very tasty indeed. Uh, Zach and Ella coming in from uh, Vancouver, 23 degrees there today. Uh, weather not bad. Uh, Kevin coming in from uh, Maratos. Uh, the council, uh, could you believe the council was swilling the streets even though there uh, is a water shortage? They might be using uh, recycled water, Kevin. I think that's what some councils are using around the country, recycled water, uh, treated water. That could be the case, not sure. But if they are using um, uh, drinking water, that, uh, that would be an issue. But uh, thanks for that. Elaine coming in from uh, Chatham, New Jersey. Blanket night here, woke up 3 degrees Celsius, still play golf. Arriving in uh, Spain four weeks from today. Fantastic, uh, Elaine. Hope all goes well with your trip. Frank coming in from a sunny Crawley in the United Kingdom. Hello, Frank. Good to see you here today. Tony coming in. Overcast Ashford in the UK. Hello, Tony. Uh, D coming in from um, Play the Oliva. Any updates on the housing stress bill? Is it a law yet? Also trying to find out if it covers apartments rented for under a year. Yeah, that law has been uh, passed, I believe. Uh, it was passed a few Thursdays ago. Not sure on the exact details, uh, D, but it does protect, uh, protect people that are renting, so look into that. Uh, Grant coming in from uh, Seattle, a.k.a. Old Guy Doing Stuff. Hello, Grant. Hope all is well. James and Kathy coming in from a warmer Worcester today in the UK. Good to see the weather's picking up there. I saw an article in one of the uh, British online uh, uh, newspapers saying that uh, weather there is going to be hotter than Spain over the next uh, few weeks. I think that was the headline. Remy with a Y coming in as well. Crazy wind here in St. Philieu. Crazy here also today, very windy. Michael coming in from Tathacorte. Some news here. A blue whale has been spotted in local waters for the first time in four years. There we go. Fantastic, Michael. The blue whale is back. Uh, Hild coming in. Costa Blanca. Gets a lot of something. I'm sure that I'll see that. Here we go. Gets a lot of uh, rain in the coming weeks. Very good, Hild. Thanks for that. Sani coming in from Basingstoke. Hello, Sani. Another regular viewer there is Sani. Angela and John coming in from Menorca. Uh, they had some uh, photos uh, highlighted recently, Angela and John, of course. Um, encouraging people to plant, to put plants on their balconies has some positive effects, at least raising awareness. One day, rooftop gardens will get popular here. Also, plants in the city lower temperature. Yeah, that's uh, true, D. But I don't think um, I don't think it uh, I don't think it should be announced the way that it was announced. You can encourage people, of course, but if people haven't got plants on their balconies for uh, a reason, maybe it's um, they are unaware of the issue. Maybe they need some type of uh, um, uh, some type of uh, uh, I don't know to be pushed in the right direction when it comes to this. But I don't think it should be a, on a political agenda. I don't think. I think there are more important things to uh, to talk about. Uh, West Palm Beach. We've got, uh, what else? That one's already reported. Grant's already got plants on his balcony. An avocado tree, a grapevine, and various spices. In uh, midsummer, I need 20 to 30 litres a day. 
Uh, lucky there is a fountain down the street or my water bill would be astronomical. Absolutely, absolutely great. Using a lot of water for those plants there. 20 or 30 litres a day. It's a lot. Uh, pulpo is Dee's favourite food. One of mine as well. Uh, Dee, I prefer, uh, she prefers a barbecued. Here in Playa de Oliva, barbecued in one piece, served with mashed potatoes and veggies. Yeah, that's becoming a popular way of serving octopus, but the more traditional way, I think, is the um, uh, the one that we saw on the screen before, right? Uh, this uh, Galician style, and that's the one that you normally get here in Madrid, the Galician style, but a lot of other restaurants are doing it the way that you mentioned there, uh, barbecued with uh, mash and veg. Uh, Renan coming in from LA. Hello, I hope all is well there. Uh, CL Man, the government run the post office in the example of a public uh, run courier company competing with courier services. Absolutely. But they're talking about delivering uh, food and things like that, uh, groceries, which is what these other delivery companies do, CL Man. So I don't know whether that would be, uh, uh, I don't know whether you would be able to compete or whether that would just make people too lazy if they had a public company where it was very, very cheap to get everything delivered to their home. Would they stop walking to the supermarket leading to other problems? Don't know. Don't know. But uh, anyway. Uh, Alex, Mallorca under the sun. We have plants on our balcony and have uh, many have sadly died. It's a nice thought, but it doesn't account for the fact that many of us are terrible gardeners. Another problem with that uh, are you so plan. I've got uh, quite a few plants in uh, my garden. Every now and again, one or two do die, according on the uh, the weather conditions, whether they don't get the water that they need or whether my, um, um, my uh, uh, drip watering system sometimes uh, fails in the hot summer months and sometimes plants die and the cold weather can also kill them off but uh, I'm happy with uh, the way my garden looks uh, Ray espero que haya tenido un buen día uh, a todo el mundo me imagino ahí thank you um, Mr. Lover thank you for your sober reality of Spain for us thank you very much Mr. Lover uh, Pat also coming in, read about the octopus also. I believe a lot of octopus are available from Morocco. Yeah, Morocco is really stepping in to uh, fill the uh, uh, the need for these products, and I'm sure that the uh, Moroccan octopus will step in, as will, will the Moroccan um, um, goose barnacle, the uh, perfere, which I mentioned the other day. I'm sure they'll pick up the slack there, and I'm sure that Morocco will pick up the slack if... Some of the uh, fruit and veg dries up here in Spain because of the drought. I'm sure Morocco will uh, pick up the slack there also. They also have a big uh, production of certain products there, considering they have very similar conditions, weather-wise, that is. 169 at Repsol in uh, Valencia. That's expensive, 169 Is that uh, premium unleaded there, Vesque? Let us know. Andrew coming in from uh, a sunny southeast London, hoping we are well. Thank you very much, Andrew. Hope you are well too. Tobias is back. Uh, finally got here again. Hoping the community is doing well. Hadn't forgotten about us, but uh, just been busy. Take care. Hope you are well, uh, Tobias. Hope all is well there in Alabama. Richard also coming in from the United Kingdom. Uh, Yorkshire, if I remember correctly. Hope everyone is well. Coming in a bit late today. No problems. State-run delivery company, according to Pau Maz, bad idea, foolish idea. Government-run companies always perform poorly compared to privately owned companies. Yeah, the issue that I have and uh, other people have is that if it doesn't make a profit, uh, who pays for the company? Who pays for the company? That's the question. Who pays for it? And uh, the answer is fairly clear, but uh, you know, I'll put it out there. Uh, the train goes from uh, Palma to Soyer. That's right. I remember that was what was written in the um, in the um, email, but I couldn't remember the exact names. Thanks, Alex, for pointing that out. Now, I'm going to change the backdrop. Uh, another one was sent in from uh, Benjamin, Benjamin in Spanish, of course. And this is down in uh, Tarifa. And it's uh, one of these uh, parts of uh, Spain where the wind... Uh, normally blows uh, fairly strong and uh, kite surfing is popular I'll get out of the way I think there's a kite surfer in the middle of the uh, shot let me get out of the way so you can see it 
There we go. All right, the kite surfer there. So a very popular part of the country for kite surfing and other uh, uh, windsurfing and things like that. Taifa down there in Cardiff, a nice part of the world. And a nice picture uh, that's been sent in there by Benjamin. Thanks for that. Ed's in the chat section. Hello, uh, late today. No problem, Ed. Regular viewer is Ed. Always welcome, no matter how late. Uh, Angela and John love the festivals in Menorca. Each town has its own, and the summer's uh, ones are horse-based and fabulous. Yep. Like I said, it depends on the size. The one here is just too big. There's 100,000 uh, people living in this town now. I don't know how many people go to the local parties, but as I said, it's impossible to get anything to eat and drink. You have to line up. The queues are uh, terrible. Uh, the rubbish lying around is disgusting. And um, But when I go to the smaller ones around the country, if you go to some of the smaller towns where they have their local festivals, there's more of a, a community feel don't really get that here and the political nature puts me off as well everyone seems to be every one of these uh, little huts seems to have a political uh, association and um, I don't like that aspect of it either but it's the way it works here at least uh, muggers in the uh, uh, chat from uh, El Camp El Campe you're just limbering up before quiz night down there there we go quiz night there we go uh rosa coming in from uh cheshunt i think that is is it not sure how you pronounce it uh cheshunt in uh hertzfordshire hello uh rosa hope you are well on facebook coming through uh rich uh, ricardo coming in also wishing every, uh, every wishing wishing everyone a happy evening or a good evening um Philip also talking about the uh, bar with quizzes, maybe by the beach. Been there a number of years ago, but can't remember the name of the bar. So there we go. We've got a connection there down in El Campello. The uh, Panama hat coming in from Malta. Uh, hello. Hope all is well. Uh, let's have a look. Lots of tourists in Barcelona, apparently, according to Ed. Uh, many plants on the terrace. But have already cut back on the watering. Yeah, it's a bit of an issue, of course, Ed, isn't it? The... Uh, watering with the plants in those drought conditions. Maybe you need to get yourself up one of these um, uh, drip uh, systems set up. Uh, what else? We've got uh, Steve coming in from uh, uh, Mullinger, Ireland, I think that is. Uh, hello, Steve. Hope all is well. Uh, Pasquale coming in from Yekla in uh, Murphia. Beautiful city, apparently, according to Pasquale. I haven't been to Yekla. I had uh, a friend from Yekla many, many years ago told me that it was a hot part of the country. And I think they've got an interesting wine um, uh, situation going on there in Yekla, I think. Gino just checking in as well. Hello, Gino. Hope all is well. Uh, Stephen is in the chat as well. The weather is improving there. Uh, Andalusia is getting a lot of rain, which they need. Keep up the good work, mate. Enjoy enjoying a drop of the good stuff. Thank you very much, Stephen, for that. Hope you enjoy. Um, Heidi uh, also confirming that it is uh, Soyer Puerto, apparently, that uh, photo that we had up before. Uh, San Isidro will happen in Yecla. Epic feast, San Isidro. I thought San Isidro was the other day, Pascual. Obviously, it might not be celebrating the exact day. Leslie's coming in from uh, a sunny but windy Tharagotha, 19 degrees. Windy conditions normal here, courtesy of the Fierzo wind. Fierzo wind, which is um, the famous wind that rips through Tharagotha, causes people to go crazy, apparently. Um, Joseph, the uh, succulents uh, and other drought-resistant plants that flower here in Gran Canaria, I don't water, but a few times a year, some of them are from the Himalayas, and looking like evergreens. There we go. The uh, uh, drought-resistant plants. Drought-resistant plants. NVN, I think, is number 100 on the uh, like button today. Thank you very much for hitting that like button. And uh, we're almost at the end of the chat. Uh, and uh, Ed saying that they love hearing from all the towns in Ireland. Used to be a sales rep in Ireland for almost 30 years and know every inch of the country. There we go, Ed, remembering some of those uh, Irish town names 
So I'm at the end of the chat, 34 minutes. Thank you very much for uh, watching. Thanks for uh, tuning in today. Thanks for participating in the chat. Always greatly appreciated. I'll be back again on Sunday. Don't know whether I'm going to put a video out tomorrow or Saturday. Don't know. Might take a couple of days off. If that is the case, I'll see you again on Sunday. So stay well. Hasta luego. Hasta entonces. Adios.